Hey guys, here on the Awesome Cast this week, we are talking about meteorites, hackery, and the tech shock as we have a big bearded return. Awesome Cast. Cast 137 coming from the studio here in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm your host, Mike Sorg. Uh, welcome to the show where we... I forget the, the site I was going to say now that you just said. Crap. Animalsfart.tumblr.com? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, it's uh, animalsfarting.tumblr.com. Okay. All right. All right. All right. What is going on? What are you doing? I am building a Jurassic Park. Oh, I thought it was, I thought it was the dog. Yeah. Who's making noises? It wasn't, me. it wasn't you? Then yeah. where's the dog at? Probably under you. Ollie! Ollie! Oh, hey, oxen free. Stop doing whatever you're doing. Come here, puppy! Go! 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 Come here! Come here, Ollie! I need to find out what's under this desk that Come he's on. interested in. Come on! Good boy! Who's a good puppy? I'm a good puppy! Huh. Who's a good puppy? You're a good Bobby. Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast 137, where we've just discovered uh, animalsfarting.tumblr.com. <laughs> Did I say that right? Is that the <laughs> one? Yeah. Yes. Yep. 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 That's where we're going with this week. Um, and we'll find out whose awesome thing of the week that is in a moment. Uh, but with us on the couch, as usual, with a little friend, is Chachi of the... Oh, he's still under ChachiPlays.com. I'm doing it for the kids. I, I did it. You did it for kids. the kids. You're done doing it for hey, the kids. Hey, you want this dog? No. Is it for the kids? Yes. Take this <laughs> dog for, for the, the kids. kids. <laughs> the, the dog that just left just went to a bunch of kids. Right. He's She's going to have fun. Um, yes, I'm down. If you move my banner... It's perfect. Can you move? There we go. Look at the doggy! Look at him! That's Ollie joining us because he jumped the fence and we just <laughs> didn't put him back. We just didn't care. No, we're just like, ah, he's he's low maintenance. <laughs> yeah. He just looks like an old man. He, he just chills. Just He's like, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. And yeah. he, might, he might bark on you. He does that right. a little bit. But joining us, hey. Guess, oh, my God. Guess who's hey, back. hey, 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 hey. Hey, so, so we were supposed to have... Uncle yeah. Crappy with us. I know. But he got pulled into an SEO meeting. Oh. An SEO meeting? I'm told it was an That's SEO meeting. That's still a thing? I think he was bullshitting me. That's got to be bullshit. <laughs> it's got to be. So well, we're going to find sick. that out. So, he, well, I, okay. Um, and maybe he just didn't want to tell you he was sick. Didn't want to, didn't want to tell me he was sick. So he made up a really bad excuse. I, I got pulled into an SEO meeting. <laughs> it's like. All right, are we talking about search engine optimization, or is that some kind of newspaper term? I, I don't know. I don't know. So we'll grill him when we get a. Uh, we'll hopefully get a chance to have him back on here right. in a couple of weeks. Uh, we got somebody scheduled next. Sorg, but guess who's back? Guess who's back? Victor Victor. <laughs> <laughs> Rob De La Crena, he's back. Back. He's back. Rob, back. downloadable content Rob, is what back. Is, what are you allowed to tell us about what what's pulled you away all these weeks? <laughs> um, I can tell you that it's 30 feet long. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey. Oh. Ladies. <laughs> Ladies. Um, it's 30 feet long. It's a story tall. It's uh, like in 32 final. inches thick. Uh, it includes... <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, probably two tons of, of metalwork. I know it's at least one ton of steel plating. Um, and, uh, we did the, we did the math and it's, uh, it's something like 600,000, uh, wire connections. Man. Um, um, uh, 384 pieces of glass, uh, 384 relays, um, one Mac mini, um, a few 70 inch displays and some other things. And, uh, until like the middle of March, I can't really tell you a whole lot about it. Okay. I, I know you, you've been Instagramming a little bit of it. Yeah. We've been, uh, I've been sharing a bit on the thing on the, the ion tank Twitter has been quite open lately. Nice. Ion underscore tank. Um, and, uh, sharing some pictures and things. So if you want to see what, what it looks like, you can see it there. Um, oh, full of beer bottles. We, we, uh, it's double-sided too, so there's like 192 things on each side. 
Okay. And one entire right. side of it was full of beer. Well, they, my my sources uh, kind of filled me in on what it is, mm-hmm. and it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty silly. <laughs> like I, I want to see it in person when it's done. <laughs> I I have to see this. Well, the unfortunate thing is, due to the nature of our business, the the opportunity to see it in person was um, not last Friday, but the Friday before that, because oh. it, it'll go and it'll go on show, and then it'll go into a warehouse for a year, and then it'll go to a show again. Oh shit! <laughs> then it'll throw away, or if we're lucky, it'll get like installed in a store somewhere for somebody, and then you might be able to see it. Oh, but yeah. you're probably traveling. I got, very I got a picture. Uh, it looks like this is this is it, and everybody's having lunch in front of it. That was dinner, actually. That picture okay. was taken at 11 at night. <laughs> <laughs> so that gives you an idea. So the, this big wall is the thing you're building. Yes, but the wall does something particular, and it is for someone in particular, and those are the particulars I cannot reveal. Of course, of course. And oh, you, you said it, on, it only takes one Mac Mini to run. Really? Yeah, I mean, it takes the... Actually, hang on, I have... Well, I mean, I... I, I, I I'm sure everyone realizes it takes more than a Mac Mini, but, I mean, the control of it is a Mac Mini, essentially. Well, so the funny thing is uh, I have on my on my desktop, I have a backup of the software to run it, uh, and that folder is a stunning 225 kilobytes. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, so wow. you don't even need the Mac Mini. No, you don't, you can run it off of a Raspberry Pi very easily Easy. if you want to. Do it. Wow! Have you guys do- dove into the Raspberry Pis? I know you were looking into it before. I have a small army of Raspberry Pis. Small that have... army. <laughs> Are you going to be making smiley faces with them anytime soon? Uh, I could. I have enough to make smiley faces. Um, I think I have like somewhere between twelve and seventeen. We just kind of throw them around at this point because they're so cheap. Um, I'm just like I'm sitting at my desk. I'm like, where does this go? I don't know. It feels like it feels like the pain in the ass thing would be though that you like like a Mac. You can just be like, oh, just you know what, board it or put in a thing or you know, it's kind of self contained. The Raspberry Pi don't you have to kind of like decipher the case for it, don't you? Not really. I mean, you can buy if you go to like Adafruit or Sparkrun or any of those uh, maker electronic type sites. You can get, I think it's called a a Pi crust or a Pi tin. It's seven bucks. It's a case. <laughs> Hmm. So I mean, like the the things add up. So you got like thirty five for the. There's only one model, five hundred twelve. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then seven bucks for a case, and then you know ten bucks for an SD card, and you're set pretty much. Awesome. Yeah, we were talking. I, I was before you got so busy. I was trying to convince Rob to make an arcade, a mini arcade case for a Raspberry Pi. Nice. But then he got super busy, and I haven't had a chance to talk to Rob in probably months. So. You've, uh, yeah, we we've certainly we've been beating the heck out of our uh, out of our Raspberry Pis. I can actually tell you exactly what we do with them. <laughs> um, we do a lot of uh, badge scanning type stuff for trade shows. And previously, you want to scan a badge, you have an RFID scanner that is essentially a keyboard emulator, and that has to go to a, into a piece of software or whatever. So you can use like an embedded system for a couple hundred bucks. Or you can use a Raspberry Pi for thirty five dollars, mm-hmm. and we just have that plugged into an Ethernet cable, headless, and so we have an application that runs on boot, takes in RFID scans, and sends it to the server, so we can have the server then talk to whatever Mac Minis have displays on them, so then they can share. So still, no, if you're, you're first hearing about the Raspberry Pi here, uh, then you haven't listened to this show for very long. Uh, it's basically just a slow computer. You basically with thirty five, twenty five, thirty five bucks here. Actually, I don't even have the. $25 version anymore no. uh, and, and it's basically just a circuit board with the the fundamentals of what you need for a computer yeah, um, it's not just a circuit board well no. it, it, I mean, it's it's but I mean visually like all you get is this like little board with some tech on it right right uh, but it is an entire computer encompassed in that uh, and and I believe the, the primary is. goal for this is education right yes yes it's it's because um it's all about that that access stuff that we uh, uh, have, probably haven't talked about in a while, but it's about how important it is for kids to get access to um, all of the tools and stuff that we use to develop. You know, like back when uh, everybody pirated Photoshop, or yeah. does pirate Photoshop. Everybody pirated Photoshop because they really wanted to use it, but it's insanely expensive. Yeah. And that's what Adobe's trying to combat with Adobe Cloud. Um, 
And it's that once you put it in somebody's hands, like they're never going to figure out how to use it unless you give it to them. So what better way to get programming and the basics of that kind of stuff in the hands of kids than changing the proposition of outfitting a computer lab from like $10,000 to like 300 bucks. Yeah. 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 300 bucks gets you a bunch of monitors and a bunch of Raspberry Pis. And that's all you need. And using a Raspberry Pi, you can learn how to write all kinds of different code. They have um, programming uh, like uh, development kits. That? Sorry, sorry. I was showing a video while you were talking. Uh, There's a project that's called the raspi.tv, and I think it was like controlled by a Wiimote, and it waves this flag and has a fan, and it tings this little <laughs> cup over here and everything. Uh, yeah, like, like, look at the wall of wires coming out of it, too. Um, this really, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but this really feels like the old, um, I, I, I don't know if you guys got like one of those old like Radio Shack electric kits where mm. you make it do something. Like, it seems like that, but the next generation. Yeah, and Raspberry itself is very flexible, and it has um, physical input-output stuff, so you can interface with things like Arduinos, and then there's, there's actually another board that you can buy. I forget how expensive it is, but it's made exclusively for the Raspberry Pi. And it gives you all of these crazy breakouts. So you can do stuff like that video you're showing. You can build all kinds of crazy stuff. So it's it's a combination of getting the whole programming aspect into kids' hands as well as like bridging that gap of it's really it's actually really easy to control physical devices and makes cool stuff from like robot like ping pong ball guns to things like that. They're all computer controlled. And interfacing the computer in that hardware is actually very easy once you have all the components together. And Chachi, you'll be happy to know that they do have Minecraft for it. Yes. <laughs> so you can lava everything you want. Uh, but now the cool thing, speaking of the education, um, I believe uh, somebody from Google or Google itself actually actually funded uh, like thousands of these going to uh, uh, schools in England. Yeah, that's from because what? they cost thirty five bucks. <laughs> yeah, so that makes it easy, right? <laughs> So Google makes what in a year? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> that thirty five hundred dollars that they sent a hundred with, it w came from their employees. Probably mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. walked around with a hat. They're like, "Hey, <laughs> cough it up, bitch." Uh, I'm sorry, cough it up. <laughs> cough it up, you. Um, yeah. Uh, so it, it's really cool to see like all the stuff coming out of these Raspberry Pis and and and. And see them get in school. They, you know, they could be the Apple IIe's of uh, of our of this next generation. I'm hoping. All right, before we move on, Rob, I have to ask you something. Are those wooden glasses? Oh, oh yeah. I guess. I guess. Um, I don't know. I thought. I thought I've had these on the show before. I, I don't think so. You haven't been on the show since last year, sir. Yeah. Hmm. Did hmm. you make those or did you buy those? These. Uh, these are cheater glasses. These are. Uh, they're not wood. They're acetate. They are from Zenny Optical. If you are familiar with buying glasses on the internet, I am. If you are a total stooge and you're still paying three hundred dollars for your frames, you're an idiot. <laughs> I mean, these were twenty dollars. Wow. Dollars with anti-scratch, anti-reflective, uh, low-index lenses, prescription lenses, all that good stuff. Zenny Optical is my favorite place ever, um, which is why I have like seven different pairs of glasses because. You can buy one pair of three hundred dollar glasses, and then a week later you decide you don't like them that much, and you still have to suck it up and wear them. Or you can buy what was like a six dollar pair of glasses from Zenny. You know what? Go ahead and buy twenty of them. You still haven't spent as much money as you spent on that other pair. Of He's not lying. <laughs> yeah. The and only then, the only thing that's required is going somewhere to get your your yep. uh, prescription. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's and amazing. So maybe two pairs of glasses that I got from Zenny that like I got them and they weren't all I hope they would be, but I know like one of those pairs was six dollars. Like, what did you spend on lunch today? <laughs> uh actually around six dollars. <laughs> uh but yeah, so that's my story with the glasses. And they're actually they're kinda of better than having uh wood glasses like the the Schwood frames or anything like that because uh it's because they're plastic so they're super flexible. They won't break. Nice. Uh, and they um nice. won't absorb like wet and get funky. That's my story. Huh. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, do they have white ones yet? What white? What frames? Oh yeah, they got plenty of white frames. I think. Very sweet. I know you don't understand. See, this whole hipster thing has started to really upset me because everyone's running around with thick plastic black frames now. Oh, I get it. 
and I've had thick plastic black frames Forever. for as long as I've had glasses. Yeah. And now everyone has them. Copying your style, man. So I wanted to go the exact opposite. And get thick plastic white frames. I'm well Ooh. overdue. I've had these glasses since probably as long as I've been on Twitter. It's bad. You should. You need new glasses. I really need good glasses. These yeah. things are beat up. <laughs> You're supposed to get new glasses like once every two years. Yeah, that hasn't happened. Uh, yeah, you know. I think. Uh, but I yeah, I, I have a bookmark to Zenny, so as soon as I get a chance to get to an eye doctor and stuff, I'm going to get that taken care of. But I mean, sure. most places or most insurances cover like eye exams at least. Mm-hmm. No. All right. Well, even but you an, gotta have insurance first. Oh right. Yeah, well, even yeah. an eye exam isn't all that expensive. Yeah. So I mean, go yeah, to America. Yeah, it's not bad. Put it down, and you're still you're still doing better than that three hundred dollar glasses, right? Right. So, yeah. yeah. So well, uh, let's get right into it, uh, Chachi. Yes. Let's start with your awesome thing of the week. Twitter accounts are getting hacked everywhere. Oh my god! And the people doing it are dumb. <laughs> no, you, uh, Sorg. If you got your hands. Uh-huh. On the Burger King Twitter account, yeah. What would you tweet? I think that's the first thing you'd put. You'd do. I had to see the tweets. I oh, the I, tweets were dumb. All I saw was what happened to the account. We're showing here on the video version. So at Burger King, if you went to it <laughs> midday yesterday, uh, it said McDonald's. I think they were saying that they were. Uh, I think <laughs> uh, the Burger King they Twitter were bought account. just got sold to McDonald's because the Whopper flopped. Freedom yeah. is failure. What? Yes. And then it spent. Uh, and you can't see it now because they, uh, Burger King obviously deleted the tweets. Mm-hmm. But they spent uh, a good 20, 25 tweets mm-hmm. shouting out their friends <laughs> with horrible misspellings and bad grammar and everything. Were they all elite about it? Yes. And it was bad. But, I mean, uh, they did manage to uh, send out some funny ones. One talking about uh, uh, blaming Wendy's for the for the Twitter hack. And then, um, <laughs> it, when it was all said and done, uh, the account got suspended. Burger King got their Twitter account back, mm-hmm. and their first tweet was, "Well, now that that's taken care of, let's get back to business." Mm-hmm. And that they they followed it up by saying, "Oh, we have a bunch of new followers now. Let's hope they stick around." Yeah, yeah. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, uh, in it was this entire so, attack. Yeah, Burger King just got like. <clears throat> Tremendously more followers than what the, the, the you know the the hey try the Whopper stuff they were doing before. Yeah. So, and we, that was, the other thing was was the um um when they're getting attacked, uh, there was like an official statement that says that our our social media team is taking care of it, which means so so Burger King has more than just a person doing this. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. I have an uh, agency that they hire. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. They're like, yeah. oh my god, what's going on? Um, but it sounds like they got like, right on it. We're immediately contacting Twitter. It was suspended, I think, not too long after it, right. it was it, it was broken. But it continued today because the Jeep account got hacked by the same mm-hmm, people. Mm-hmm. It is uh, over on uh, uh, NBC News has a screen cap here. Jeep, the official handle Twitter handle for Jeep, just empty every pocket, sold to Cadillac. Yes. Operation Mad Cow, Operation Whopper, in a <laughs> so, hood near you. Um, and the group behind it said they're going to hack a a verified account every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really? Yes. Look, look out, Chachi. What's that? Oh, wait, no, you're Chachi verified. That's right. Yeah. But here's the best part. Out of all of this, out of all of this, <laughs> MTV's, uh, oh, what's her What's her title? Uh, MTV's PR director okay. sends out a tweet uh, on her own account saying, oh, looks like the MTV account was hacked. What is this? Four MTV? hours before uh, MTV and BET changed their, I, their avatars to the other station and started talking smack on uh, the state on the station that they worked for. <laughs> BT hacked. We're bringing Jersey Shore back. Hashtag yes. MTV hack. Yes. Hack However, MTV. On a scale of one to ratchet, how much better are the BT awards than the VMAs? Yes. Mm-hmm. But here's the funny part. Not only did it not take long for them to re- for the general public to realize that MTV and BT uh, hacked or, or 
quote unquote hack their own accounts. Uh, if you you knew anything about broadcast media, mm-hmm. then you knew from the get go that that wouldn't happen because they're owned by the same company. Yeah, they're both owned by Viacom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're not going to talk crap on each other. No, no, unless it's an a, uh, organized effort like this. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, and, oh, great, great zinger to end it here. <laughs> we totally catfished you guys. Thanks for playing Heart UBET. Yes. From the MTV account. Really, guys? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if anything, that hurt them more than it helped them. <laughs> yeah i mean wait a wait uh, you know you gotta go okay okay uh, if i'm you're like the pr director for these guys you gotta be like oh we gotta get on this train just like everybody's gotta do a harlem shake video now right yeah. we gotta do oh, ours, guys. come so on funny. guys come on guys i laugh every time i don't um i, I shouldn't but i do uh oh, oh apparently uh we got in the chat room the suspect guy try to bring it up here but uh, really like good on the, I, I don't know about the execution but good on them for doing something you know what I mean? And, and you know, reacting to what's going on out there, being very topical as they well, often Well, I mean, do. it wasn't a total failure at first, Here's considering your hero, they were the trending. Here's your Burger King uh, hacker. Oh, there so, you go. There you go. But, uh, Thanks to the Juggalo John in the chat. I, I mean, they were both trending worldwide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I, it wasn't all so bad. So it, that, that worked, you know? But now everyone's laughing at them. Yeah. So, but they're but still talking about. Them. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very true. No, Not that anyone's going to run out and start watching either of these channels if they don't. No, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, at this point, it's mind share. You know, it's yeah. like, hey, look, MTV did something, and it's not the Jersey Shore. You know. Yeah. So that's what they do. Goddamn Jersey Go them. Shore. Go them. Rob. Hi. Do you have an awesome thing of the week? <laughs> I do have an awesome thing. I have an awesome thing of the month. Is it a throat lozenge? It is not a throat loss. <laughs> I actually, when I came back from my last show, I got I got such a bad cough that I dislocated the cartilage in my ribs. Oh. Whoa! Yeah, I saw you talk about, about that. that. Yeah, I'm still recovering from that. It hurts I a d- lot. I didn't realize how you received the injury. Yeah, I uh, pro tip, kids: if you have like a really bad cough, don't try to hold it in. <laughs> Just don't. Because I, I, I was like sleeping and tired of coughing, and then uh, I held it in. And I ha- I heard like a really loud pop. Mm. And now let's just say it takes me about ten minutes to get out of bed in the morning every day. So and apparently it takes like a month and a half for this thing to heal. But anyway, oh yeah, uh, dislocated ribs or broken ribs suck. Yeah, because you can't do anything about it. Yeah, you just and, gotta gotta deal with it. Yeah, and it takes forever. Yeah, it hurts like a bitch too. So my awesome thing. Um, a while ago, a bunch of months ago, um, <laughs> there were some rumblings of Tech Shop coming to Pittsburgh, and I'm going to explain what Tech Shop is in a minute. But so I was at a show, but uh, I sent my two people from my company to go out to San Francisco to hang out with the Tech Shop guys. Um, they're actually at a show like right next door, and talked to them. And then, like uh, when the Tech Shop guys came to Pittsburgh, they showed them around, and now Tech Shop's here. And it's amazing. So what Tech Shop is, is uh, Tech Shop is, uh, imagine a gym, like a thing you pay a membership fee to, but instead of working out, it's like all of the tools you could ever possibly want to use, everything from a simple drill press all the way up to, say, an $80,000 water jet. Jeez. So is that what I'm seeing here in your Instagram is the water jets? Uh, no, those are, um, those are, uh, 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 I'm having, uh, lathes, metal lathes is what you're looking at. That is a set of metal lathes. And mm-hmm. behind that is the, um, the ventilation squid and the, uh, there's a plasma torch behind those blue curtains. Wow. So the way it works, um, there's a bunch of these. I'm actually on the website at the moment, so I can be really informative loading, loading. So, uh, tech shop first opened in Menlo park, but there's also one in, uh, Really, North Carolina, San Francisco, San Jose, Detroit, Austin, and now Pittsburgh opening like March 3rd, I think, coming soon to uh, Chandler, Arizona, Washington, D.C., and Brooklyn, New York. Ha ha, we got it before Brooklyn did. <laughs> LOL. Um, so the way it works uh, is you pay them a membership fee. I'm going to pull up Pittsburgh's fees so I can be useful. 
If you were to do uh, an individual membership, just you, and you want one month's access, it is 175 bucks. But if you want a year, it is $1,395. Now, sounds like a lot of money unless you actually use these kind of tools and you're thinking to yourself, like, say you're a woodworker and you're like, you know what I could use? I could use like a really nice lathe. All right, well, you're starting at $2,000. Well, okay, then I'm going to need tools for that lathe so I can use it. All right, we'll tack on another like uh, $300. Oh, and then when it breaks, you have to stop doing what you're doing and get it fixed or pay somebody to fix it. So like the, the price goes up and up and up. So at this point, you paid for four tech shop memberships or you get a tech shop membership and you don't just get access to a wood lathe. You get wood lathe, panel saw, metal brakes. You get Tormac three-axis CNCs. You get ShopBot four-by-eight CNCs. You get plasma torches, plasma table, welding torches, MIGs, TIGs. You get CAD-driven CNC machines uh, that do quilting, which I've never actually seen. That's the one thing they have that I've never seen. Um, they have a full robotics lab. They have a full AutoCAD lab. They have uh, vacuum forming. They have um, rapid uh, prototyping machines. They have 3D printers. They have. They don't have metal printers because those are crazy expensive. Uh, they do have a water jet machine. Water jet, if you're unfamiliar, is a thing that cuts uh, anything, literally anything, even diamond, um, using high pressure water and an abrasive medium. If you happen to mix that abrasive medium with diamond, you can cut diamond. Fun fact. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and literally anything. So this is anybody from. Uh, a maker who's just interested in getting their hands dirty all the way up to like my company ion tank we were about to buy a twenty six thousand um, dollar um cnc router instead we're going to buy a membership to tech shop because i can use theirs and that's fine <laughs> and it's so much cheaper than twenty six thousand dollars and when it breaks we don't have to worry about it they take care of it they also have so before you can use anything in which you can hurt yourself you have to take uh, what's called an SBU class, which is a safety and basic use. And that is basically, here's how to turn it on. Here's how to turn it off. Here's how to not kill yourself. And then above that, they have instructors. So you can take classes. You don't have to be a member to take classes. But you can take all the classes you want. Uh, they range from like 45 minutes to like four and a half hours. And you can learn how to use any of the stuff that they have. And on top of that, you're going to a place much like a gym. You know, you go to a gym, you're working out see somebody who knows what they're doing, they say, hey, that thing you're doing, that looks useful. How do I do that? You can do the exact same thing in tech shop because you're going to be surrounded by the same people. So you're building a robot, and you see somebody else who's like, say they're really good at the casting plastic molds, and you're like, hey, you're really good at that. Can you make me some legs for my robot? And they say, heck yeah, I can do that. And suddenly there's this ridiculous explosion of creativity and brain trust that happens all from the tech shop. So it's very cool. If you're in Pittsburgh, it's in Bakery Square. If you're in some other city, you should go to techshop.ws and beg for them to bring it to your city if it isn't already there. Um, all the information for how much everything costs is online. The only there... thing they don't have online for Pittsburgh yet is um, what classes they have available because classes are based on what instructors they have hired, and they are desperately trying to hire instructors. So if you want to do that, you can do that too. And if you, I think it's like if you teach 16 hours a month or something like that, you get a free membership. Nice. So, nice. That's my awesome, awesome, huge, ridiculous thing. Are there day passes? There are no day passes because um, you really, because of like the SBU thing, and the SBU thing is mostly for insurance purposes. They want to make sure nobody gets hurt and like just had no idea what they were doing. Gotcha. So because yeah. you have to be like trained and stuff, you need a much longer time than just a day. Gotcha. Uh, you can do uh, a month is the shortest. You can do as an individual month. It's one hundred seventy-five. If you're a student, a one-month membership is ninety-five bucks, which is like go out and buy a drill for less than ninety-five bucks, and you're going to regret it. Yeah. Or you could go to Tech Shop and use all the tools you want. That's awesome. Huh. That, that's awesome. It's awesome. We're getting something like that here. 
Um, I mean, yeah, it'd definitely be cool to go and check out. It's just for someone like myself, I don't know if 175 bucks. Yeah, but I mean, what, but, do, what need do you have for these I don't. kinds of machines? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but in the event that what? I would need access to something. Yeah, yeah, but this is something for somebody who's more like an, an enthusiast in these kinds of things, like Rob here. I'll just ask know. Rob to go do it. Like, hey, Rob, can you, can you make me a thing? Yeah, I need, I need a thing <laughs> for my you thing. Said- this creates this this like awesome location where all the makers get to hang out together and mm-hmm. work with energy, but also certainly it creates this additional community where you're like, hey, I need somebody who can do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure they can find somebody for you. Yeah. Freaking lasers. Freaking lasers. Uh, it's underneath uh, Urban Active in Bakery Square. Nice. It's Zork. Yeah. What's your awesome thing? What's my awesome thing? Yeah. Freaking meteorites, man! They're are we, coming. Are we gonna die? I don't know. No. Um, it, uh, I was, you know, I was just my own business, you know, reading some stuff. And Saker comes over and it's like, yeah, most of my most of my students didn't get much done because they were watching the meteorites in Russia. I'm like, oh, that thing that was passing by? No, the one that hit Russia. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, if you didn't, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure everybody's heard by now. Yeah, Russia got buzzed apparently by a meteor. Uh, I think it was the size of a coffee table. No, it was the size of an SUV. Size of an SUV. Okay, I, I, here maybe that was a different one. Oh, like, that was that was another one. Because apparently, I don't know. They were talking on uh, on one show about, and I don't know. This guy's a little conspiracy theorist thing. Supposedly there was like another one that maybe that not as big of a thing as this was, but maybe buzzed uh, San Francisco, and there was another one somewhere else. Um, you know, on top of like the one passing by or something like that. But okay, so if you've seen the videos, and actually I'll pull one up here. Um, there's tons of video of this thing. Uh, it comes, you start seeing a cloud, and then all of a sudden, I don't know, is that it there? There's a giant flash that happens here eventually, um, which was apparently the sonic. There it is. It's starting there. You see it falling in there, and you see yeah. that flash right there. It's from the sonic boom, probably. What you're what you're actually seeing is when it breaks through the the upper hemisphere. Mm-hmm. Where it like breaks through the Bernie bits. They usually say, you know, like space dust is always space dust and dirt is always falling towards the Earth. But pretty much all of it gets burnt up in the atmosphere. But this thing was so big that it didn't get burnt up, which is why you see that huge fireball. Yeah, that's the atmosphere basically burning as much of it can off of it before it enters the atmosphere and then comes crashing down into a suburb or whatever in uh, in Russia. Uh, supposedly like like the bits of it that did crash crashed like off in the mountains it didn't actually hit anywhere uh the worst damage we saw out of it i don't know if there's a picture here somewhere that there, there's a picture of like some factory that has like a giant hole in it from and it was apparently it just fell in from the from the shake from the uh from the sonic boom uh because what? i mean it, it, it hit and it must have like felt like an earthquake because just everything shook from that right um, and I guess up to nearly a thousand people were at least hurt in some way. I think they said about 46 people were hospitalized. Uh, you know, nothing super, super serious except for, you know, people were bad enough. They had to go to the hospital. Nobody died from it or anything like that. Um, but, uh, if you look on YouTube, you'll find a video of not the meteor, but of like security cams and places that were near the impact. And what happened was, and the reason so many people were actually injured is there was a pressure and that pressure wave, if you were standing near a window, mm-hmm. the whole of the house would cave in. That's why people got injured, because they got a face full of glass. Yeah, I mean, it's just like you see in the movies, right? Like in Transfers or somewhere, there's an explosion and, 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 and like the entire side of the building blows up. That's basically what happened here, right? Yep. So, um, so yeah, it, but the, kind of a side note from this, other than the... Holy crap, meteors are actually kind of hitting, which they are. I mean, this is nothing new, really, right? No. It just this happened to happen right in the middle of a town in Russia. And side note, hey, everybody has cameras in Russia on their dashboard. Yeah. Which is kind of the, like an interesting, like, wait, why does everybody have these cameras on their dashboards? Um, on top of it just being the you know the 20th century and everybody has a camera otherwise but that you you had all these like like the one we showed here let's get rid of the other oh look there's an ad for zenny optical ironically here how about that or what <laughs> is this ad for zenny optical it's because you looked it up i guess so no youtube personalized apps ads now yeah, anytime course. anytime i go there i get the uh the advertisement a, for the, the website that mm-hmm. i ordered the uh, Chachi plays trophies from. Nice. Yeah. 
<laughs> that doesn't seem very helpful because you already know about the place. Yeah. Oh, anyways. Uh, but no, everybody's got these dashboard camps. Uh, Rob, you were telling me a little bit about why they everybody seems to have these dashboard camps. It's uh, it's a lot like <clears throat> if you talk to anybody who has to drive on the roads in like uh, Iraq or Afghanistan, like the normal uh, suburban roads and stuff like that. It's just that traffic control, like it's it's one of the areas where there isn't enough police to keep people on their toes, basically. So there isn't the the traffic violations are rampant all the time. So the only thing to protect yourself because everybody's insane um, is to have that. So if you go on YouTube and you just look up like like uh russian fail videos is a pretty good place to start um you'll find all of these taxis and cars with and, and it certainly doesn't help that they have such harsh winters and snow and ice are everywhere but just cars get destroyed time and time again from like trucks falling off of cliffs and it's not just that they have dash cams there it's that this stuff happens so there are more dash cams so they record more of it and that's why you see more so the reason that they were able to capture this meteor from like five hundred different angles is because everybody drives really terribly in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Which and that was the other discussion that kind of happened. I don't know. I got a, I got a fail video clip thing on here. I'm, I'm going to see if it's actually a car situation. Um, but but the other thing is like you know if this happened like you know even twenty years ago when we didn't have like the internet and stuff, uh, you know we you know Russia would be like no, nothing happened. Nope. 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 Uh, but now we have, oh, I hear somebody getting hit by a car or running in front of a car and putting a beer in the car. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> and climbing onto the car with his beer. <laughs> so, oh, jeez. <laughs> he just hit that guy. Oh, shit. <laughs> so there, you get an idea why everybody has a camera on there. <laughs> Wow. So there you go. And there's this dancing guy going on. I don't know what's happening there. Uh, anyways, um, so yeah, we, we really kind of got this event from like every possible angle at this point. And uh, yeah, meteors. So and they said they didn't see this one coming. Oh, other thing also spun, spun off from this. You know, we're actually working on a missile defense system. <laughs> <laughs> we have missiles. All right, I'm sorry, and a meteor defense system. We and have, all right. Listen, mm -hmm. I, we already had a, a meteor defense system. All right? Bruce Willis? We have missiles. Yes. We have gamers. Mm -hmm. We've been practicing for this for 30 years. Missile command? Asteroids? Asteroids. <laughs> We're pretty good at shooting asteroids by now. Uh, that's true. That's true. Give me a joystick. I'll hit the damn thing. Apparently, if they if this was 2015, would have, we would have seen the Russian uh, uh, meteorite coming, because they were actually putting up a, a array of uh, 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 I forget whether it was telescopes or whatever up in the North Pole, uh, so they can see stuff coming at the Northern Hemisphere. Hmm. And I guess they're going to have uh, the South Pole too, or somebody else is, or something like that. So it, there's that, and there's a missile defense system. I think they said, uh, you know, by 2020 they'll have that ready. Um, so so hopefully nothing happens in the meantime. We're screwed. <laughs> <sighs> they won't let me control it. We're screwed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there you go, missiles. They're wow, Russians are nuts. <laughs> Sorry, I got to shut this off. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to stop and rush. Okay, I'm going to have to look that up. That goes along with the, the Tekken Bear finals I need to find that somebody at Chachi Plays was telling me about. Um, <laughs> yeah. 20 years ago, this meter would have caused World War III. Yeah. Actually, yeah. In the middle of Cold War or something like that? Maybe. Maybe. So. All right. Uh, what else is happening? Anybody, anybody watching House of Cards? No? Not yet. Am I the only one? Yeah, so far. I am the only one. I finished it. Did it's you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Started getting tired towards the end. But other than that, um, I liked it. It was pretty good. Um, I had the entire day off yesterday, and I didn't watch any of it. I should have. That was a, it. Would have been the perfect time too. Yeah. Like because he, he kind of wanted to. I, I couldn't do this like day to day, week to week, or something like this. I'm, I'm glad they kind of dropped all 13 episodes in your lap like this. Uh, but I was reading a really interesting article where they were talking about how they use subscriber data to make 
uh, house of cards basically to the point where did you know that they know exactly what you're watching like they have all that data of like like to On the Netflix? point to the point if you go to certain movies for the sex scene um like if you're looking up the mr skin and getting all the sex scenes and everything like that they know that they th then they have like stats for everybody that just goes to the sex scenes of movies and stuff like that um but apparently in the case of house of cards um <laughs> apparently uh, ryan, ryan, ryan Edmond says he loves me um it's for the wrestling guys apparently in this one so house of cards of course is a bbc thing right well it, of course they know you're watching mm -hmm. They have logs of everything that's accessed on their servers. So they have this giant, massive information of yeah. what I've hit, what I click for the, you know, you suggested a couple of things. You know, I kind of went through one of those weird movie marathons, uh, uh, what, Friday night, where I was watching all kinds of weird, wonky, independent stuff. Um, but in this case, they were saying that anybody that watched the original BBC series House of Cards also tended to make movie, uh, also tended to like movies featuring Kevin Spacey. <laughs> Perfect. So when this came up, Perfect fit. They knew it'd be a hit, well, so there you go. Plus, was, plus the fact that it's right in your face every time you boot up your Xbox right. that, that didn't, weekend. That didn't hurt. Definitely helped. So, uh, what do you, other than that, we, then of course there's other productions coming up, <laughs> and we'll see how those go. Uh, uh, Rob, what do you think about this idea of Netflix kind of becoming an HBO with original content? It doesn't care. Uh, actually, I watch Netflix quite a bit at this point. Burr, 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 burr. I only really watch two around. things. Though. Uh, I watched uh, the, the I don't even I don't know what it's called the uh, the one about the uh, the gangster that guy the first one they did oh Lily Hammer yeah yeah Lily uh, Hammer which was pretty good like on a scale of like network television to Showtime it was like halfway there um, and the new things I mean everybody says it's good I haven't watched it yet. Uh, interesting it's certainly in the right direction it's also i think uh isn't uh you go making a deal with somebody right now are they i haven't heard any new ones um i know hbo go i don't <clears throat> i haven't heard anything uh, uh new from them there's always some kind of movement though uh oh you can now hbo go onto your apple tv that's what oh it yeah 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 oh, that's a big one and, and you know which cable providers you know like right. like I can get I can get the HBO Go on my <sighs> Roku, but I can't get it on my X or I can get it on my Xbox, Sorry. but not my Roku because of who I'm getting my HBO Go from. So how did that work for Apple TV? So, but but it's good that it's expanding out to other boxes. Yeah, it's, uh, and it's also, you know, like we've always said, like this is the this is where things are going. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of old bureaucracy in the middle, and a lot of a lot of folks who just don't care. Like nobody's passionate about this stuff except for the nerds. Hi. So. <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, Hi. So when, like, you know, ninety percent of your constituency couldn't care less, why would you even? Why would you even bother? You're just going to keep watching BET anyway. So, you know, yep. This is it's a step in the right direction. It's just going to take forever. That's all. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's the uh, the ten percent that are making the difference. Then we're the, we're the head of the curve. We're kind of like the. You know, the, 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 if, if 90% of everyone's audience don't care, mm -hmm. then the decisions are going to come down to that 10%. Certainly. Because that 10% is going to make or break them at this point. Well, unfortunately, 90% of their income is coming from those other people. So. Yeah, yeah. Right. But it, it, at that point, it's about bragging rights. Mm hmm Who's first? Who's on, on the next wave? Because everybody's seeing what's happening. The handwriting's on the wall here. Right. Yeah, people are looking for alternatives. People are <laughs> looking, for, you know, if, if not cutting the cord just because the options are there, cutting the cord because they can't afford to. You know, uh, you know, they're looking for other options. They don't want to be can... handcuffed like this. The, 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 the day where, like, oh, I have my gas bill, my telephone bill, my internet bill, my cable bill has become, oh, I don't really need the cable bill anymore. Right. So, I mean, those options are there depending on who, you know, where you're at and what you're into watching of course it's getting easier and easier um juggler john in the chat uh, it, it, we didn't have this in here i only caught one thing from it but the streaming awards were apparently over the weekend yeah we were busy we were busy watching the pay-per-view yeah. over the internet yes. um but the only thing i saw from it uh that was making the rounds um friend of the mayhem show facade actually tweeted it i got to see the video was uh vanilla ice bringing back uh ninja rap 
uh, and do a nice, it, nice baby. It didn't a bunch bring of, it back. It's always I know, there. I know it's always there. Bring it back so other people realize it instead of us that went to the gathering. Um, about 10 years ago when he remade it. Uh, but, but it was a pretty good montage he did. He actually had uh, the epic battles of rap history. Epic, epic rap battles of history. Yeah. Guys were on there doing a Gates versus Jobs thing. Mm -hmm. um, they had a guy, I don't know who it was, but he was doing um, a piano version, uh, a lounge version of, uh, of Ice Ice Baby. Richard uh, Cheese? No, it wasn't Cheese. It was this Pretty other sure. guy. Yeah, it was this other guy. Pretty sure. It was just him and a, and a piano. Pretty sure it was Richard Cheese. Pretty sure it was not Richard Cheese. Pretty sure it was. Nope, some other dude. Nope. Um, and this other guy that was like doing, you know, uh, uh, DJing with his mouth and you know and stuff. I guess these were like kind of mean people and stuff. I saw I saw the my drunk kitchen Fun. girl in the audience. That's Crappy all I recognized. Came. What's that? Crappy just came on Skype. Crappy just came on Skype. Is he done with his SEO meeting? No, it just came up on the thing. I got a notification. Hmm. Oh, well, we'll see. I'll, well, well, it's almost over. But we'll get him on. He probably he probably passes SEO meeting. We'll, we'll we'll buzz him for that later. We'll see if I can get a statement on DM. So, um, I don't. Know, so, anybody else? I mean, did you hear anything about the streamies? Is there anything significant with it? It's the third annual streaming awards. I I I have the exact same streamies that I do. The Grammys and the Golden Globes. In that, I really just don't care. Yeah. It's just like it's a bunch of people in – I mean it, it's like it's like the internet has developed its own uh, uh, hip club that we're not a part of. Well, I mean like I know, I know some friends who went to the streamies and were like nominated for the streamies. And it's cool. It's basically – it's a big party and it, it's an excuse to hang out with everybody else who does the thing that you do. Yeah. Which is uh, – just don't kid yourself and think that like your word is like the voice of the people. Yeah. Know? Yeah, exactly. I don't even know. Is this um, is this a, a a voted thing, or is there like some kind of streamy academy? I have no idea. I just assume it's all total crap. Yeah, that's probably good. It is a Dick Clark production. No. <laughs> what? What? It's not that, actually him. He has like like Dick Clark Productions is a big company. Well, Dick Clark Production is basically Ryan Seacrest now, isn't it, or yeah, something? Um, yeah, it's completely Dick Clark Productions on here. I don't think you heard that when you went out for a smoke there, Chach. It's a Dick Clark uh, production. I can relive my childhood in here. Well, the streamies. Yeah. It was hosted by, um, by, uh, uh Chris Hardwick. Oh, okay, the guy's in here. Um, let's see, Burning Love pretty much dominated, something I haven't watched. Uh, SourceFed and Phil both won, uh, from John and Bobby here. Uh, yeah, Phil and SourceFed are like the Daily Show and Colbert of the internet. So there you go. So I uh, yeah, it's cooler doing this. I mean, this is the internet. You know, again, kind of seeing that uh, you know your HBO and goes and everything have to react because there's stuff like this that are getting millions of views. Something like SourceFed that's like a low end production. All the stuff Chris Hardwick does on the internet, you know, with his production company. I mean, this is a this is a serious competition. It's kind of, it's kind of a coming age thing that there's an award show that 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 you don't give a crap about. Right? Yeah, like we're gonna live in this weird dual universe thing where there's a real Grammys and a Grammys for the internet, and like a real there'll be like an HBO and an HBO for the internet, and there's uh, tech TV. And there's people are talking on the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's and you know uh, it, it's, it's just it, it, it coming along, right? It's so much that we're probably gonna need a second internet soon. In the internet two, the yeah. sequel. Okay. For the rest of us, I mean, well, that—that's actually not too far from some of the discussion that there needs to be a another level open internet that's not all corporatized like this one is. So that's a whole other thing. Um, what else we got here? Uh, this was a uh, weird uh, tweet. Hereafter collects the final tweets of the recently deceased. Wow. Not creepy at all. Not creepy at all. But it does, I mean, there's definitely been discussion over the last few years of what happens to your Facebook, what happens to your Twitter when you go away. I'm giving it to you. You're giving it to me? Are yeah. you going to will it to me? Yeah. Oh, man. You'll receive a thumb drive that has just a notepad. It's <laughs> just a text document. Why do you put a text document on this 32 gigabyte uh, thumb drive in the shape of Darth Vader's head? Yes. Huh. And it'll just be my passwords. <laughs> 
and a list of instructions as to what my last post on each of those sites needs to be. Okay. Okay. Then, you know, is that something we need to do? So, you know, I mean, as we, you know, all of us here, we're kind of developing these internet presences. We just, you know, a couple of us down, just downloaded our, uh, our Twitter histories. Oh, I'm realized. planning out a week's worth of tweets. Uh huh. You know, to go you out for after I'm gone. Do that, you know. What's that? Like that's a thing you normally do in their will and testaments at this point. Yeah. Is like this is what I want you to do with my social media accounts. Yeah. Yeah, you almost have well, to. I don't want people to get upset that they didn't get access to my uh, to my my social media accounts. That's why it would just like uh, into Sorg, I leave this envelope. And it'll be like a spy thing where you just get a thumb drive and you'll be like, huh, what's this? So in, in this case, this Tweet Hereafter project is a uh, – uh, it's described as an experimental project here in The Verge. Uh, it's a brainchild of a couple of guys. It's essentially a collection of the last tweets ever posted by, quote, notable, newsworthy, famous, or infamous people. Uh, that's around 50 tweets currently stored on the site stretching back to 2009. So – Wow. Uh, let's see, death is, is a touchy subject, and we certainly don't want to uh, upset people. Okay. Most of the feedback has been along lines of, wow, this is a morbid and somewhat disturbing, but fascinating. Um, there's something undeniably dark about the concept, but it evokes a real sense of sadness. What? In 140 characters. Oh, I'm going to have a whole week's worth of tweets for you <laughs> after I'm gone. <laughs> Like, the first one is going to be like, uh, I should have brought a flashlight. It's kind of dark in here. Wow. Because, you know, I'm dead. I'm in a casket. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was wondering where you're going to yeah. go with that. It'll all be all tweets from beyond. Riz says that you'll be the Tupac of Twitter. Yeah. He's not really dead. He just sent out this tweet <laughs> that said, man, wish I had a big back right now. <laughs> thumb drive. Uh, in that thumb drive, a picture of a notepad. <laughs> Hmm, the twit pack. Huh. So there you go. Well, that was a turn. Um, <laughs> My kingdom for a gl for a mug of coffee. <laughs> so this is uh, this is one along your lines here, Chachi. Uh, of course, New Newtown has been in the news because of the the, the violence that happened there. Was that back in December? I believe it was. Um, there was a story that came up, kind of gaming related here for you. Uh, Sandy Cook. Sandy Hook Arcade Center is being uh, uh, popped up there, um, which is, you know, you know cool because they're usually disappearing, right? Right. Uh, it will feature video games alongside traditional favorites like pinball and hockey. It's also being funded by the community, local businesses, and donors from across the country uh, contribute to the website. Uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a cool, you know, in a wake of everything happening there. Uh, they're getting together and throwing, you know, kind of like, you know, like, well, you know, I was saying, or like with Shaji Plays, we're trying to throw a good, you know, spin on video game violence, you know, especially since it's being blamed for all that crap that happened up there. Um, it's kind of cool to see that the residents of San, uh, Sandy Hook are doing the same thing. Sure. So. I, I, I'm pretty sure that's the same place that wanted to burn all violent video games in town and then they decided not to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they wanted to go all 49, 451 on it, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Well, I mean, that, that, and there's it some last. people in the town. This is other people in the town trying to do a good thing, you it know? It won't last. It won't last? No. no. It, someone will get sick of maintaining it. Yeah. It, it, it's just bound to fail. No, yeah, it could be a good community effort, so. All right. Um, anything, you guys have anything else uh, you, that's popped up during the week you guys want to talk about? I haven't I haven't poked my head out of a cave until very recently, so I haven't I have nothing. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, if no other meteors, oh, Rob, are we be seeing more of you now, or is this a a some of the time appearance now? Uh, <laughs> my computer is kind of freaking out at the moment. Hold on. Um, um, <laughs> I well you're next week because I'll be in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> And uh, I won't be here the next week uh, either because I'll still be in Miami. Wait, uh, is, is this a work vacation? Well, I wish it was a vacation. You know that thing I just built? Now I have to make it work. Oh, in Miami of all places. So, so I'm in Miami for uh, nine days, I think. Yeah. 
the uh, the hotel prices are so crazy in Miami that we decided to rent apartments instead. <laughs> and he slows so, to a crawl. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> so you're renting an apartment. Yeah, we're renting several apartments actually, because <laughs> of us that are going. So that, but after that, hypothetically, I'm not doing anything until like uh, maybe April, May. So we'll see. Nice, nice. So uh, good to have you back. Good to touch base. Rob's at robjdlc.com. He's got all of his points on the internet there. Uh, before, be sure to follow you, you on Twitter. At yep. Rob J D L C, where he's posting uh, what he can reveal about what's going on, and them eating lunch around technology. Uh, also, was dinner. There, dinner. I'm sorry, dinner, uh, or fourth meal, or whatever it may be. Also, Ion underscore Tank to see the cool things that Rob does, mm-hmm. and other people that Rob works with does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chachi, he's at at Chachi says. Da da. Tweeting since 2007? Something like that? 2008? Some 2007, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that seems right. Yeah. That seems right. A long time. Recovering nicely from Chachi plays. Oh, yeah. Any other, what, what we got unsung? We're shooting unsung this week. Yep. You just got a movie theater. You, got, you just got done shooting a wrestling show that involved a flaming bi- bi- baseball bat. Yeah, that wasn't as exciting as I thought. Yeah, it was, I just wanted to see the ring. I thought the ring was going to catch on fire. I was worried about that a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Just a little bit. Um, in all his video adventures, so go follow him there. I'm over at MikeSorg.com, at Sorgashan on the Twitters. Um, I've been enjoying living in the future lately. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, blogging and all that. Uh, and check out all our projects going on. A lot going on. Oh my god, there's so much going on right now. Um, go check us out. I didn't say at the beginning. Hey, we're at AwesomeCast.com. Contact at AwesomeCast.com for uh, emails. You can tweet us at AwesomeCast. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. You can uh, grab the show on iTunes, on Stitcher, uh, on your Roku box, and Blip TV, and YouTube. And uh, in video and audio formats, whatever works for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And join us here live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com, uh, where guys like Brother Sorg, Texas Anarchy, The Wrestle Fan, uh, Wheels, Bobby F. J. Town, Juggler John, Riz, and others uh, will join us and uh, fill us in. Oh, there you go. There they are. Uh, and you can watch the stream with us all together and be involved in the awesomeness. So thank you very much to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Yeah. Studio dog. A, Studio mutt. There's a Tumblr that's animalsfarting.tumblr.com. <laughs> what? And it's videos of animals farting. Wow. Oh my god. Hey guys, welcome to the Oscom. <laughs> Oscom. <laughs> Oscom cast. Welcome to the Oscom cast. <laughs> I'll be your host. <laughs> <laughs>